third speaker of this session will be uh, Sunaina Candlewall, uh, talking about her research in biochemistry and, and uh, molecular biology. Hi everyone, my name is Sunaina Candlewall. Um, I'm here to present my research on glided induction and CXCR3 dependent interleukin-8 production, spe specifically in a subgroup of celiac disease patients. I work I work at Dr. Fasano's lab, um, Dr. Leslie Fasano, and work directly under Karen Lammers at the University of Maryland Baltimore School of Medicine. Just to give you some background on celiac disease. Celiac disease is an autoimmune enteropathy triggered by the um, ingestion of gluten, which is present in gliden, and contain and food containing products like wheat, rye, or barley. In susceptible individuals, um, gluten triggers disassembly of the tight junction in um, epithelial cells and further intestinal damage. This damage um, leads to malnourishment, anemia, iron deficient anemia, fatigue, bone or joint pains, and other related effects. Now a key protein that has been um, identified in this pathway is zonulin. Um, it's been identified as involved in the early phase of celiac disease as well as the tight junction disassembly. Now recently in our lab, we were able to identify CXCR3, which is a G protein coupled receptor of the CXC chemokine family um, as a receptor for gliden in, um, in the cells. My D88, which is myelin, myeloid differential differentiation primary response gene 88, has also been identified as a key um, factor in this pathway. This um, glide induction of induces a mind radiate dependent activation of the zonulin pathway, which then leads to intestinal damage and permeability. So we have um, confirmed this by looking at CXCR3 positive or CXCR3 negative mice. CXCR3 negative mice um, fail to respond to exposure to glide with zonulin release and further intestinal permeability. It has also been reported that gliden leads to an increase in cytokines like TNF-alpha, which is tumor necrosis factor alpha, as well as IL-8, which is interleukin-8. They're both reported as chemotaxis, um, chemotactics for T lymphocytes, that is, they recruit T, um, T lymphocytes um, to the site of infection. It does so in, um, mono, in undifferentiated, undifferentiated monocytes, as well as dendritic cells and macrophages. CCR3 has been reported um, to be expressed by different T cell subsites, including CD8 positive cells, which are cytotoxic T cells, gamma delta T cells, both CD4 positive and CD8 positive cells, which are cytotoxic as well as helper cells, and the natural killer cells, as well as um, dendritic cells, which are a different cell of their own. So keeping all that in mind, um, the goal of our particular study and my particular research is to study the role of CXCR3 upon glided induction in PBMCs, which are mainly lymphocytes and monocytes, and analyzing um, this induction and cytokine production. Now the methods we use, we first obtain IV approval from the patients. We collected PBMCs from 25, 21 different celiac disease patients um, that were on a gluten-free diet for at least six months, so they had no remnants of gliden in their system, and PBMCs from 10 non-celiac patients, so completely healthy controls. Both of these sets of PBMCs were then incubated in pepsin trypsin um, digested gliden for 24 hours in the presence or in the absence of anti-CXCR3 um, antibody which would serve as um, a blocking to the receptor, as well as the appropriate isotype controls. The supernatants from these incubations were then analyzed for um, five sets, for six different um, cytokines, I'm sorry, uh, five different cytokines, TNF-alpha, IL-8, IL-6, IL-10, and interferon gamma, using um, luminic cytokine assays. They're pretty much based on principles of flow cytometry. Um, so now for our results. TNF-alpha, right on top, is a pro-inflammatory cytokine, that is, it induces inflammation. It is um, known to specifically work with neutrophils, but it also induces neutrophil apoptosis. 
interferon gamma right here is um, also a pro-inflammatory cytokine. It increases antigen presentation by macrophages. It promotes natural killer, natural killer cell activity and promotes adhesion and binding required for leukocyte migration. Now you can see um, here are healthy controls and here are the celiac patients. In both of these cytokines, we see an increased level of cytokine production in celiac patients as compared to the healthy controls. But over here you have the um, just gliadin induction, over here you have gliadin as well as the anti-CXCR3 blocking. Same over here and in the next two. We don't see any um, specific decrease or increase in the TNF-alpha or interferon gamma productions when, the, it's when there's blocking by the CXCR3. So there's not much relation in either of these. Next we looked at IL-6 and IL-10. IL-6 is again a pro-inflammatory cytokine. It is important in acute phase responses. It promotes differentiation of T cells into T helper cells, and it's an activator of natural killer cells as well. IL-10, on the other hand, is an anti-inflammatory um, cytokine. It inhibits the synthesis of pro-inflammatory cytokines like interferon gamma that we noticed before, IL-2, IL-3, and TNF-alpha, which we noticed before. Now for IL-6 and IL-10 again, we see that both the production is higher in celiac patients as compared to healthy controls. But in um, IL-6, we see that the IL-6 production goes down when there's blocking of the CXCR3 receptor. In IL-10, we see that IL-10 production goes up when there's blocking of the CXCR3 receptor. Our major um, finding in this study was, however, in IL-8 production. IL-8 is also a mediator of inflammatory response. It induces chemotaxis in target cells, mostly neutrophils, so it gathers them and recruits them to the site of infection. Over here, the data you see, early in all the cytokines, we found that all of the um, 21 celiac disease patients, as well as the 10 healthy controls, all had um, a response where they produce cytokines upon induction by gliadin. However, in IL-8, we only found about 30% of the healthy controls and about 42.8% of the celiac patients were actually responded, actually responded to the IL-8 production when induced by gliadin. So the rest did not respond with IL-8 production at all, and the reason for that we have not been able to identify yet and we're working on it. But the main um, point over here is that IL-8 production increases in cili celiac patients as compared to healthy controls but specifically, when CXCR3 is blocked, this in, um, increase completely is abrogated. There's something that CXCR3 um, does, or the, the fact that CXCR3 is not, no longer present um, completely decreases IL-8 production. So um, those were just the results that I actually just summarized for you. In terms of summary, so for cytokine production, we saw that gliadin-induced cytokine production in both healthy controls as well as celiac patients. So those cytokines were just not a result of, um, of a patient being celiac. Cytokine levels are higher, however, in celiac patients. Um, gliadin-induced production of, of TNF-alpha, interferon gamma, IL-6, and IL-10 occurs in all individuals but production of IL-8 is restricted to only a subgroup. In terms of role for CXCR3, which was our specific goal, we find that IL-8 production is definitely CXCR3 dependent. That is, there is something that is, um, IL-8 is actually involved in the CXCR3 dependent pathway. Blocking the receptor completely abrogated the IL-8 reproduction. CXCR3 leads to a partial decrease in IL-6 and a partial e increase in IL-8. TNF-alpha and interferon gamma were not affected, although they are known to be important in um, inflammatory response upon ingestion of gliadin. So for discussion, as I mentioned before, these results show that gliadin induces a strong immune response. 
Um, so the wheat we eat induces a response in our bodies, no matter if we have celiac disease or not. The difference in having celiac disease is that there are basically two important, um, there are two important um, regulatory mechanisms that are needed at the intestinal level to prevent the tissue damage that is caused by gliadin. First, we need an intact intestinal barrier. This forms our first defense and prevents the entry of gliadin from the lumen into the mucosa. Once this happens, when gliadin does enter though, it is presented by the antigen presenting cells to the T cells and the lymphocytes, as well as the B cells, inducing the adaptive immune response. Once the response is induced, our next um, barrier should be the regulatory potential of the immune cells. The regulatory potential pretty much helps the cell to control the adaptive immune response. In celiac patients, we found that this, this regulatory potential is decreased. That is that um, the, the T regulatory function is diminished such that the adaptive immune response is increased, leading to the inflammatory response as we see in celiac disease patients. Now this could be a positive, the, the reason might be um, the genetic predisposition that celiac disease patients have. We have found that HLA DQ2 positive and DQ8 positive individuals have a particularly increased chance of having celiac disease. So this is just to put um, my research into perspective. I'm pretty much working specifically on the immune response, the adaptive immune response, once the intestinal barrier has been bro broken and once we've identified that the regulatory functions have been diminished. Um, in terms of further um, research, I would like to particularly look at which cell types are responsible for the IL-8 production and the actual pathway that is involved in this production and then related back to the overall inflammatory response that is seen in celiac disease. Um, those are my references and in terms of acknowledgements, I'd like to thank my mentors, um, Dr. Leslie Fasano and Dr. Karen Lammers, as well as the Meyerhoff um, Scholarship Foundation for making this possible. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Yeah. Uh, one brief question. I think your results are, are very compelling, and I was wondering um, if you knew any more about the celiac patients. I know that they were on a gluten free diet, mm -hmm. but um, were their diets controlled in such a way? Uh, so, what I'm thinking about is when you talk about the immune um, susceptibility, um, were there other aspects of their diet that could have interfered or interacted with their immune system response that? Uh, outside of the, the uh, restricted gluten from their diet? You know, we haven't looked into that. Um, our specifically, we looked at just eliminating the gluten from their diet to make sure their, immune res their um, intestines were back to normal and their immune response had been um, lowered. So we haven't looked at other um, possibilities, other, um, um, what are they called? Um, allergies, food allergies that the patients could have that could have be led to um, these results. No, but that, that is a good point that actually we should look into. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, what's the main significance of IL-8 in your research? IL-8 is a pro-inflammatory um, cytokine. So it leads to differentiation of the T cells into helper cells or cytotoxic cells which then leads to a greater immune, um, immune response. So looking at IL-8 helps us figure out why it is that there is this re response, immune response, uh, upon ingestion of gliadin. Yes? How are you planning on finding like, the actual pathway of the IL-8 um, production and which cell types? Like, how do you plan? Well, the first step would be figuring out the cell types. Um, we have um, used, we've, we've started um, isolating different cell types using magnetic columns to like CD8, specifically T cell types, so CD8 positive, CD4 positive, BDCA1 positives, BDCA4 positives, and then looking at cytokine production by just those specific cell types and eliminating there and then looking at that particular cell type and looking at other cytokine productions. Well, there's no further